Hi there, welcome back to Let's Talk with Melissa and Paul. Got my cup of tea here. Yum yum. With me today, I have three out of the four dogs we have. Peanut's sleeping upstairs. This is Finn. He's my emotional chihuahua dog. And then on the chair behind me, we've got uh, Emma and uh, we've got Bella. Bella's the small baby. Emma's mama. So, Finn's my emotional dog. He sits there. He goes everywhere with me. So, yeah, he's a little more playful. There you go. All right. Let's get started here today. I know it's we've been promising videos and we haven't been producing with everything family issues and everything going around us. It's been kind of put this project on the back burner. So I'm hoping to kick start it off with this one. Um, first of all, I'm going to let you know our videos are for in, entertainment purpose only. All the information obtained is public knowledge. Personal opinions and discussions are always welcome. You know, I don't remove content whatsoever. Um, so, today we're going to talk about uh, YouTube channels. YouTube started out with users um, to share videos, and, and now it's turned into a huge business. Uh, you got uh, channels for shopping halls like Walmart, Dollar Tree, you know, uh, and stores like that. You know, I went shopping. Oh, I got an, I got a um, a package. I got a um, a service where I get samples and stuff every month. I got Avon. I've got uh, Gitsy and all that other stuff. Then you got videos out there that um, mutt bangs. You know. Uh, I, I laughed about it. It's about uh, people who are uh, who like to eat, like to show off, kind of do like uh, a food critic type thing, and give it a little dining experience. A lot of fast food you mostly see, but you do see other content as well. There's also another one that disturbs me a little bit. It's called ASMR. They love. It's people who do videos. And they watch them to hear other people chew their food. It's To me, it's weird. I, I can't get it. I don't understand it. It's a fetish somehow uh, that took off more than what I thought. Then you got DIY videos for arts and crafts. People doing showing off their talents and stuff. And then you got how to do videos. How to fix this. How to fix that. Uh... Walkthroughs for games, you know, and stuff like that. Family outings, music videos, movies, and so much more that YouTube provides. But today we're going to talk about YouTube channels. Um, one channel uh, that my wife watches a lot. And I started watching some of the content in that. And I, I can only watch to a certain point And then I come back to it again. Um... Uh, trailer Trash Tammy. She's a comedian putting on skits. Everything she does is in character. She never criticizes or belittle her audience. She makes my wife laugh for hours. And thinking about it, she's very smart. She made a name for herself with 1.6 million subscribers. She's doing something right. So if you get a chance, check her out. Our main topic today comes to another channel. Um, we come to Cynthia, Cynthia Beaumont's channel. I am not a subscriber. Never will be. Because uh, I there's so many... She puts out so many videos. And then you've got her haters that put out twice as much videos through her. And so I'm going to kind of give you a tidbit what I'm thinking of uh, when I've watched so many of her videos. Um, you know, I, I'm constantly seeing when I see her videos is I can't believe she said that. That comes through every time a majority of her videos is that she makes these ridiculous things. I think that's all script. It's just how she feels. It's the way she is. And sometimes she doesn't know her own audience when she makes these certain comments. Here, um, 
Her early videos were funny, and it dragged you in watching them. But for some reason, her channel has hit hard times, lots of bad language, she's paranoid, and she's depressed on hanging on to subscribers. You know, um, some people do it better than, she's not the worst, but she doesn't, she's not the best person to try to hang on and try to grow her subscribers. Now, granted, somebody's going to look at my subscriber list Heck, you got a dozen or so people. You're well. I'm new. I kind of grown. My wife had a channel um, that we were using. It had over several thousand people on it, but then it got hacked, and then we couldn't get it back. YouTube wasn't very helpful with that, so we kind of started over and try to rebuild this up. And we're doing this differently. Um, you'll see a lot of the same content that Synthony does here, but we don't. You know, we're not going to be sitting there criticizing and yelling at people and we don't delete content. You know, we can't grow if we don't know what's wrong and how we can improve it. So, going back to Synthity, um, I came up with five reasons of one things I've noticed about her videos. And, granted, I, these are from the last year, year and a half that I've gone through. And believe me, I've gone through her videos. I've gone through... Her haters videos to see if what is true, what is not true, who's stretching what. And this is what I came up with with my top five with Cynthia's videos, okay, when she posts these. Uh, and first of all, I am not discouraging you to um, not see her or not subscribe to her channel. Um, it's free world, your choice. Um, this is just my opinion. If you don't like my opinion, I understand. Um, but, um, I'm gonna kind of take this, uh, not so much of a hater, but kind of take this into a different way. First of all, my, my number five. She keeps you guessing about what version of Cynthia you're gonna get. Every day, every video she posts, from same day she'll post multiple videos, which is fine. But you never know what kind of Cynthia you're going to get. It's like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type thing on every video, you know. And then sometimes she changes in midstream. You know, she gets on a rant or a tangent and then she's off topic and then she's off into the pasture someplace. And then it sometimes she comes right bringing it back in and sometimes she doesn't. Number four, she manipulates to get what she wants. Now, on YouTube, I've kind of learned this is called e-begging. Now, toxic people have a way of sending vibes that their audience owes her something or owes them something. She's never happy unless she's showing what she pur purchased. By the way, she continues to remind her audience that she's short on funds to pay for things such as rent. Uh, I'm down to my last loaf of bread. Uh, I got tea i ran on my expensive coffee uh she it's it's nice that people feel sorry and send somebody something but this is a constant you know there's other things to utilize to get if you need assistance e-begging is not the way to go okay especially I, some of her videos somebody sent her something like a can of tuna and she wasn't happy appreciated that someone sent her the tuna she was unhappy because it wasn't her brand she doesn't like it and it's like you ain't happy you know you gotta be happy you know with your audience so she's never happy number three cynthia will stretch the truth to gain her viewership i won't say any more on it view your content and you make your termination. Number two, Cynthia won't own her own behavior. Rather, owning her actions, don't expect an apology. So what is the point to argue with her? She is single-minded. She doesn't accept input or feedback or criticism. So, and she doesn't, you know, so she doesn't accept her own behavior on these videos. Number one, Cynthia brings irrelevant information into each of her videos. She drags it on. My grandmother, as sweet as she could be, she could talk for an hour and she never got to a point. 
Cynthia is the same way. She'll, in her, everything is non-scripted. She sit there and her mind goes wandering off. And then you wonder, why am I watching this video? Makes no sense. You know. So. Now. 2020 has hit hard for everybody. Majority of us. Never experienced a pandemic like this before. Each of us had our own had our own lives turned upside down, making sacrifices to survive. Cynthia, I'm sorry about your loss of your husband, Tommy. I really am. I understand that. I understand it's an adjustment, period. But some of your expectations through your videos regarding, you know, after that, Several months after that, I understand we all grieve in our own way, but I think you need to watch what you're doing with that. Um, I understand you're doing what you can to survive. Losing a loved one's never easy. E-begging, attacking your subscribers, is not the answer. There are services in your county, your state. That you can apply for assistance. And a lot of them are online. So you don't have to worry about leaving the house. Okay. Um, now. What if the ad companies paid attention to your videos? They would back off. It happens on radio, cable, and TV. They would consider it. Consider, oh, excuse me. Consider it a media relations nightmare. I would have, um, it would have to be different. I, you know, YouTube is different because I think they just have the videos, they just plug them in. If the advertisers saw your video and how you rant and rave and attack your viewership, they wouldn't want any association with you. So you got to break through YouTube, but consider your audience. Excuse me. Now, Cynthia has moments when... She you're scratching your head and wondering if she's off her medications. In her early videos, there were times she was silly and fun to watch. Now, not so much. Um, for a Christian, man, I'm telling you, I would be wondering and praying for you that something's wrong. Your contact and F this, F that... Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you can keep friends. In this world, being isolated and all that, by yourself, I understand, you know, we all get moody and frustrated and angry about what's going on, and we just want to hit it hard. You, you are trying to make money, you know, and who wants to listen to someone cuss up a storm? Like the way you do. So here's my suggestion. I got a few suggestions for you. Now, granted, it's a grain of salt. It's just my opinion and all that. Uh, number one, go back to your original format. Review your older videos. Your audience will enjoy you more if you return back to the old format. It's why your subscribers grew. Think about it. Number two, have fun. And be happy during your videos. It's 2020. Majority of us log into YouTube to take their minds off, you know, their problems. We don't want to hear you curse and acting like a nut. You know, it all might be an act. If you're doing it as an act, you're doing a piss poor job. Long term, you're going to lose your audience. You know, and you might have lost a bunch of audience. They just didn't un unsubscribe you. You know, I, I always thought how that functionality worked when my wife would had, you know, five, six thousand viewers. That how many of them are active? How many of your users are actually active? You take out the unactive ones or that um, or who hasn't logged into YouTube in six months and see what your figures are. Would you be making the same kind of money? Number three, no excuses. Your rants shows your audience too much anger. We're hearing too much pity, poor me. Too much drama, too much gossip. 
Look, I suffer from depression and anxiety. And the first thing we learn, all that hate and anger is not healthy. All it drives is additional hateful feelings. And they're not going to solve your problems. So you want to grow your subscribers? Turn it around. Number four. Let's get serious. You make it clear you don't like negative feedbacks. You're not afraid to let your audience know that. You have taken it to the next level by deleting comments. You can't grow your channel by not listening to your audience. Good or bad comments. If you tell you if you tell your viewers you do not care, you're doing it one way, Cynthia's way. And that's not right. You shouldn't be doing that. I hear you going on and on and on. It's like, how much is a person going to take all that drama coming back into their watching? You know, even watching a drama movie, you don't get that much content coming from them, out of them. So, why make what makes you think that this is going to work? I don't know. Um, it's... I don't know. I've seen so many different videos, uh, different channels that I've seen. Like I said, I like the the content that uh, trailer trash Tammy. Hers are can be outrageous at times, but you know, going in, she's a comedian putting on a show. That's her business, and that's very smart to do. She's showing her talents, and she's making a name for herself. On this content. Why would, that you could stand and watch. Why would I, anybody wants to watch your channel, Cynthia, that is so much hate? You know, a lot of us is trying to drag hate out of our lives, and you keep bringing it back in daily. And most people will watch you go act like a nut. But long term, they're going to get tired of it and. And my understanding from your hateful fans, something they said or something they did, you shut them out and ignored them. And some of those friends could be your best friends and best supporters. But you shut them out. I watched one video today. There was this uh, two guys. Um, I thought their points were spot on. Uh, I'm not going to mention names. And they love you to death. And you choose to shut people out. That is a bad sign for depression. Because I've been there. You can't shut people out. And I know it's hard at these times. With COVID-19. Can't get out. Um, even getting out of the house and walking around the neighborhood is better than sitting there feeling bad. So, take my advice. You know, you got to be healthy in the body, but you also got to be healthy in the mind. And your mind is, right now, is off a little bit. So, think about what I said. Um, that's all I have. I appreciate everybody watching. It's uh, middle part of November. It's cold out. About 49 degrees outside. Uh, for other notes, inside, Will is doing much better. Um, we have a appointment with uh, the hospital, uh, the next level for people having seizures on November twenty second, um, December twenty second. So um, we're trying to Melissa and I are trying to put things into place to help try to make his life a little easier. Um, we're looking into a watch that can detect seizures. We're looking into what, what we can do to get one of them. So we appreciate you, uh, your prayers and your thoughts regarding that. So other than that, our family is fine during this, you know, COVID-19. Um, the state of Ohio has gone majority red. They have one yellow alert and the rest is, you know, is 
becoming red. And the governor's threatened to shut down businesses um, and restaurants and the whole works again. And in my opinion, they do. I understand there's a crisis, but if they start shutting down restaurants and stuff, the majority of them are never going to come back. Um, and unemployment's going to go through the roof even further. So I, there's no good reason other than, folks, wear your masks. You go out in public, you wear your mask. And for those who feel that they're a little skivvy about going out with their mask and stuff, wear gloves. You know, wear those plastic gloves you could buy at Walmart, Walgreens, or whatever. It doesn't cost very much. And put them on if you feel like you're worried about germs and stuff. But, um, yeah, social distancing has to be practiced a little better. If we're going to make it out of there. Because I don't think the country could use a, a complete shutdown. So. My prayers and thoughts for you and your families. I hope everything is going well. Um, if you have any questions or concerns. Leave a message. And I'll reply back. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you on my next po podcast. Take care. If you have enjoyed this video. Click the subscribe button. To get the latest contact. And check out the other great clips on Let's Talk with Melissa and Paul on the YouTube network. Thank you.